Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make a installer using Electron Builder and how to have a icon for your Electron app. Let's get started. So right now I have a basic, 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 basic application, just a basic HTML page, CSS and index.js. All I've done is disabled the web contents dev tools and that's about it. So currently I have a start script and I want to create a build script. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to call it build and in here, we're going to say nothing for now. First thing we're going to want to do is actually install the packages we'll be using. And we're only using one. So it is called um, electron builder. So MPMI dash dash save because we want this as a dev dependency and it's electron dash builder. And once this is installed, we will then in our build script actually call electron dash builder. Okay, so electron builder is uh, oh, I should probably do that. There we go. So we have Electron Builder in our dev dependencies. Perfect. So now that we have that in our dev dependencies, what we're going to want to do is actually create the build um, options inside of our package.json. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste these in here since there are quite a lot of them. There we go. And here you can see is our scripts and our build options. So first thing, I'm going to run through them top to bottom. We have our app ID, which is basically the name we want to give to our application. So I'm going to call it my app. Then we have some preferences that are specific to Windows. So the Windows preferences. We're going to say our target is an NS IS installer. And the icon is going to be called icon.ico. And I haven't added that file, so let me do that. I'm just going to drop this in here. And as you can see, Icon.ico is simply um, an icon that looks like this. So if you don't know how to create ICO files, you can type in on Google PNG to ICO. And these two first results are gonna do you just fine. You just basically select your PNG file and make sure it says ICO up here. And it'll give you an icon for um, to be able to use with Electron. Next, we have our NSIS installer. So since we set our target to NSIS, that means for Windows, we're gonna be doing an NSIS installer. And I'm gonna actually um, run through what these do. So first thing is one click. This basically means it's a one click installer. They just click agree, click install, and it goes. Then we're gonna set the installer icon and the uninstaller icon to our icon we have right here. And then the uninstall display name. So this is basically the name slash the title the window will have, like you can see up here, for the application when it's getting uninstalled. Next is the license. So the license is optional, but I really think it's a good idea. So lic.md. And this is basically a file that the users have to agree before they can install. So I'm just gonna say, hello, yt, subscribe if you enjoy. And this is something that will be shown to the users every time they start the installation of the app and they have to click agree. Next is allow to change installation directory, which is pretty straightforward. It's set to false by now, but if you want to enable this, you'll have to set one click back to false. Okay. So that is actually all we need to do to get our application um, to have an installer. So if we actually go up into our terminal and type in npm run build, what you'll see is pending any errors, we should see an output that looks something similar to this. It'll say like electron builder, cannot detect a repository. That's fine for now. Um, you don't need a repository to do this, but you will need it to actually deploy and publish the application. So um, yeah, it should pretty soon. We should see in this dist folder, um, cannot read property provider of null. Yep, and that's fine. So inside of the distribution folder, if we open this, we should see a test setup, and that's because the folder name is test um, setup, and you can see it's 58 megabytes. So if I open this, we get our installer. Here's the icon. 
Here's also the icon, and here is the message. Low YouTube, subscribe if you enjoy. You can see if I don't want to subscribe, I can't really do anything, so I can cancel, come back, and I have to agree, and what you'll see is it'll install the application, and here it is on the desktop. So we have our application, you can see we have our icon down here, as well as up here, and if I close and I say click on the icon on the desktop, you can see it opens the app up. Furthermore, I can pin the icon to the taskbar and I can uninstall it. So I can do add or remove programs and I can uninstall. I'm trying to find, I forgot what I called it. App, yep, so here it is, my app uninstaller. And if I click uninstall, uninstall, are you sure you want to uninstall test? Because that's the name of the, the app. <laughs> And there we go. And you may be wondering, why is it called test? Well, it's because up here, the name and the product name are um, both test. So I can set this to my-app, and I'll call this my-app as well. And I'll show you what happens if we change allow to change installation directory to true now. So if we set this to true, and we set this to false, what you'll see is it's very similar, but we will actually allow the users to change where they install the directory instead of it typically going um, in the applications folder. So slash programs false. So now you can see it is doing the same thing as before. This error is fine. It's just because we haven't actually set um, any of the uh, electron updater stuff. So we can open up builder or dist in a new folder. And as you see, we have a different um, application startup. So here we have my app set up. And if you can see, I open it, I still have that license agreement, but now I can select who can use the app. So I'm just gonna say only for me for now and where I want to install it. And I'm gonna install it on the desktop right here. And I'm just gonna click install. So you can see it does the same thing and then it allows you to do run my app. So here is the actual application. It's very much the same thing as before, but it allows us to do that. One thing I will show though, and some of you might actually be having this issue, is you can see I can do Control Shift I and open the dev tools. Now, some apps you may want this for your users, but some apps you may not want your users to be able to open the development tools like this and start playing around with it and maybe deal with the code a little bit, you know? So how do I disable this developer tools? And this is for any Electron app, not any apps in particular that's using um, Electron Builder. So what we wanna do is go in the index.js, go into the web preferences object and set um, dev tools to false. And this will simply disable development tools for everything. So that includes um, in development mode as well. So if I run npm run build one last time, what you'll see is, I'm just gonna close that and it'll actually re-override um, this app. I'm just gonna drop that in there, install real quick. And it's called my app, so here it is. Uninstall it. There we go. Okay, so let's open up the distribution folder. And in here, we have our application, but as you'll see, we won't have to worry about DevTools uh, showing up. So I'm just gonna install it in the default directory this time. And when we run it, you can see, if I do view toggle developer tools, nothing happens. I can also do control shift I. And again, it's not gonna open the developer tools like before. So if you found this video useful, please like, comment, subscribe, and also leave me suggestions in the description slash comment section if you have any questions. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.